Um, I did a video on my most recent inflammation panel, how I'm interpreting it, again, to help uh, those of you who have these uh, to interpret your own. Um, I got a little bit exuberant, as I often did, and went way too long, as I often did. It was over 20 minutes. I will uh, publish it. I'll release it about probably about three weeks from now. But I thought I'd do a quick five-minute version. Uh, this was at the Healthy Life Summit in Orlando, late March. Uh, great reviews. We had a great time. And a lot of people said, you know what? You scared me to death, and I'm glad you did. Um, <clears throat> so just to go over a quick uh, version of my own labs and my interpretation. But before I do, just one quick plug for the channel. If you... Um, if you're, you're not getting all the videos from the YouTube algorithm, you won't. Um, I've done some research on this because people keep saying, I don't, I'm not getting all your videos. We're doing them daily now. Um, and what I've heard is that only 10 to 25% of people that both subscribe and actually even press the bell to get a notice on every one of the releases, you still... 10% of, of you actually get the releases. So if you want to take matters into your own hand and not be uh, controlled by the YouTube algorithm, give us your email address. Uh, we're starting to collect those. We haven't started putting out summaries yet, but we will uh, over the next month, I believe. Start providing uh, lists of the videos that we've released and give you some basic tips and some um, list on the videos that have been, and specify the videos that have been uh, popular and received well. So, real quick, back to my, uh, my labs, uh, my inflammation panel. Um, you have to hunt through these things. They, um, I won't get into any of that. I'm just going to go to the numbers, though. My microalbumin creatinine ratio was 9. Um, Below 30 is the standard cutoff, but 9 is an issue for those of us focused on cardiovascular health. Uh, it's been shown that low-grade microalbuminuria is a uh, significant risk factor. I'll do videos on that later. For those of you who don't remember what that is, we're looking at the, uh, whether or not this intima layer, the lining of the artery, is intact. When you look at this scheme of the uh, urine, um, actually, let me go back and just mention something. Microalbumin uh, creatinine ratio is in the urine. So what does that urine test have to do? So as I said, we're looking for to see if this lining is intact, the intima layer. The kidney is um, a million, each kidney is a million filters, and these filters the filter membrane is actually the, um, the intima layer of the artery. So that's why we're looking to see if protein is spilling out from that uh, filter artery into the urine collection duct. If it is, then we have something irritating and making holes in our intima layer. That's why microalbumin creatinine ratio is so important. Uh, we can talk about, well, the short story on creatinine, why do you have that in the ratio? It's to help us make sure that, this, uh, that there wasn't a, a variation based on level of hydration, whether you were underhydrated or overhydrated. Now, uh, this is the only other place you're going to see the rest of my inflammation panel. CRP was 0.6, so again, nice and low. Myeloperoxidase was elevated. Now, what does that mean? It's hard to say. Now, myeloperoxidase is the most common false positive. Uh, Brad and Amy, in their book, Beat the Heart Attack Gene, will call it the joker, saying everything else can be okay, but you get the joker, uh, your life is very short. I'm not convinced that my life is short, and I, in fact, have to talk a lot of people that have read that book with this finding uh, off a ledge. And here's why. This number, the myeloperoxidase, is by far the most common false positive. What is it? Well, let's go back and take a quick look. Uh, that's plaque 2. It's an enzyme released by the uh, T cells and lymphocytes, and this is MPO, myeloperoxidase. You may have heard me say in other videos 
it's green, uh, the, just like the mucus of some kids when they have a significant sinusitis is green. Myeloperoxidase is an enzyme released by one group of immune cells. It is a green color. Now, what is, what is this image? Uh, this is an image of um, the artery wall. This is the intima layer. This is the um, plaque and media uh, layer. When there's plaque here and we get this uh, cytokine activity, cyto meaning cell, kine meaning uh, pulling uh, signals to come here. When you get plaque in here, you get cytokine activities. Those cytokines tell these, uh, this family, the polymorphonucleocytes, the PMN cells, or neutrophils. Tells them to come in and start uh, cleaning up a mess here. So they do, they come in, they release these packets of this green enzyme, and that begins to liquefy that plaque. Now, why is that the most common false positive? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Number one, you have healthy uh, uh, PMNs, uh, neutrophils, polymorphs, in your blood. When the uh, venipuncturist that took your blood uh, processes that blood, if she waits to, he or she waits too long to uh, spin that blood down, you get death of these cells. They then release that uh, my MPO into the bloodstream and therefore into the serum. So it tests as a false positive. There's yet another way that it can test as a false positive, and that is this. If they, even if they spin it down on time before that 30 minutes, and, and when they're doing the pipetting, so once you spin it down, uh, you've got a plasma layer, a white cell layer, and a red cell layer. If the tip of the pipette goes below the plasma layer and into the white cell layer, um, you get a whole bunch of those white cells again, and therefore another false positive for that MPO. Now, what do I advise patients and what will I do? I'll take melatonin. There's research indicating, uh, and I haven't done any videos on that, but I just wanted to mention it. There's research indicating that uh, if there is a problem there, uh, continue, uh, take melatonin until you get your next test. It does have a positive impact. So, back to my tests. Um, CRP, C-reactive protein, uh, and plaque 2 are both normal. A brief summary of C-reactive protein. It's made by the liver. It reacts to a lot of things. For example, if you have a flu shot today, your probability of having an elevated CRP is over half, just two days from getting your flu shot. So it's a very nonspecific. It's one of the most popular used for uh, inflammation testing. But again, lots of false positives because it could just mean you had a flu shot a couple of days ago or a bump or a bruise. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned PLAC2. PLAC2 is very similar to MPO. It's released by white cells as a result of this inflammation in the uh, plaque area of the artery wall. It's a different type of white cell though. It's not the PMNs, the polymorphs, the neutrophils. It's a different type. It's uh, monocytes or T lymphocytes. So again, a, a brief run through what was going on. Uh, now what am I thinking about? I, I, before, let's go back and look at my uh, labs from two years ago. Crystal clean, uh, 2017, uh, MPO was 210, plaque 2 was 70, uh, HSCRP was uh, 0.7, so, and uh, microbial creatinine ratio was totally undetectable, so no, no spillage of protein at all. You know, I have to tell you, I, I was disappointed and surprised. I expected, again, to do a victory lap on this, on this lab and didn't. I had some... Um, some mild positive numbers. Am I worried about those numbers? No. Uh, do I have some ideas about what caused them? Yes. You know, for, for about six to, well, over six months, I was working full time with, uh, with physician partners, the, um, the uh, prevention group in uh, Medicare Advantage. 
Great work, really enjoyed uh, working with 700 docs there, focusing on how to, um, to help them understand prevention. And um, it was the chief, chief science office there, presented a lot of science behind prevention to the group. Did a lot of traveling, way too much traveling and way too much eating. I gained about 10 pounds from my normal 155 up to 165. As I did, my insulin resistance creeped up. My, um, my atrial fib started kicking up. So I've been doing a lot of, uh, I've done some weight loss. I've been doing two days a week of uh, fasting. And uh, I had, I've dropped my weight back to the 155, uh, mid 150s. I had hoped that I had fixed my problems, but uh, maybe not. I still have some more work to do. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. And I'll do the uh, later video in a few weeks. We'll release it. Thank you.